blessing us, thanking you for being you, thanking you for waking us up, thanking you for letting us be able to come to church and be able to praise your name. We thank you for we thank you for keeping us when we should not have been kept. We thank you for being the light when it was dark. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for keeping us together. We thank you for we thank you for letting you be you, and we ask that you just keep us healthy, keep us blessed, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 I don't know about y'all, but hey, amen. 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 Lord, amen. Amen. God, Praise thank God. you so much. Yes, amen. 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 That was a blessing, you guys. Amen. That was really a blessing. chapter 2 verse 17 be that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna and I and will give him a white stone and in the stone a new which no man knoweth, saving him, saving he that receiveth it. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you. Opportunity to give. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. We have two ways of giving. You can mail in. For those watching, you can mail in your offering. ATMI, 8 PO Box, 2295, Davenport, Florida, 33836. Or you can use Cash App, which is dollar sign. H-C-M-I-L-I-F-E. Glory to God. I actually have two scriptures on here, so I'm going to give you the first one I have. Pastor Dale only has one, but I actually gave you two. And the first scripture is, I'm not going to show you that, but the first scripture is 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 8, in the easy reading, easy reading version. And it says, remember this, if a farmer plants only a few seeds, he will not get much as a result. But if he plants plenty of seeds, he will get a big harvest. Each of you should think carefully and then decide how much you can give. Then you will not be sad to give that money. Nobody's easy reading, easy reading version would sound strange to some people. Not only uh, happy to give someone who is happy to give help to other people. Since God loves you, he is able to give you more than you need. You will always have every good thing that you need for yourselves, and you will have enough to do many good things to help other people. The understanding the purpose of giving, as I just showed you all of the events we have coming up, all of the functions, that's to help the community. That's to help everyone that's here, not just us, but the other people here, the students that are here, um, parents that don't have money to give, that to parents that don't have money for their children, we can bring them up here to do the trunk and treat. Bring them up here and give them a uh, Thanksgiving meal. It, will, it doesn't even matter what it is. As long as God is leading us in the way and the path of how we're doing it, we want to be able to give to God with a portion just a portion of what God has given to us. We're not saying give all of what you have, but always remember, God loves what kind of giver? Cheerful giver. God loves a cheerful giver. God doesn't want you putting your, plunking your money in the basket and watching the basket as it walks away because you've not released it to him. Your, your blessing just went right there with it too. So we want all of what God, I don't know about you guys, but I want all of what God has for me. And if that means being obedient to the word, then that's what I'm going to do. And 2 Corinthians 8 and 9 says, For you know, I used to love the scripture, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. 
What does that mean? That means do what he tells you to do. Say as he says, give as he gives, not grudgingly, not in doubt, but do it with strong belief in him. When you are obedient in the word, when you are obedient to do the word willingly, you commit God. Don't y'all want to commit God? Amen. I, I think that's a good thing. I'm going, I'm going to commit God and I want to obligate him because I'm obligating myself. So if I'm obligating myself to him, I'm obligating him to me. And we used to always say, got a need? So a seed. So a seed. Yeah. God bless you. I pray that you all are really understanding that and believing that. We're going to have, we're going to learn to speak this. Everyone is ready to give stand to your feet, please. And we're going to speak the our offering. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just come before you right now, giving you all praise and glory and honor. Acknowledging you, Lord God, in all things. Expecting you to be God in all things. Allowing you to rule, reign, rule, and direct our lives in all things. So as we bring our seed, our tithes, our offerings, if we, as we bring and sow these things into the body, we speak to our seed. And we'll say our faith confessions together. We speak to our seed. We're going to say it together. We speak to our seed and we command it to flow and to grow and to multiply and return in the, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. We don't want anything but just to be in His presence. We serve the Holy One of God. And although we desire to be in His presence, He also wants us to be in His presence. There's a partnership that we have with God. And the longing that we have to be with Him, He longs he desires, he seeks after us. And God is always present. He's a very present God. In our time of trouble, in our time of need, he's very present. You don't have to go looking for him because he can always be found. The care he can always be found. Fathers, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray this morning that we may hear from heaven. I give you permission to speak through my mind, speak through my vocal cords. I give you authority to possess me by the Spirit. Holy Spirit, dwell on the inside of me. Manifest your love from heaven today. Open our eyes that we may be able to see. Open our ears that we can hear. Dear Lord Jesus, give us a heart to understand what we believe Holy Spirit is saying to us today. Give us deep revelation, knowledge. That they may hear the voice behind the curtain. That they may hear Holy Spirit speaking to their senses. That you open up their understanding, God. That we realize it's more to it than just believing, but it's of in our receiving as well. And for that, we give you praise and much thanksgiving. And all the church said, Amen. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, this year we've been. We started off the year with stepping into your newness. And we're, we're now in, in the month of September and we're forging along. And I think we're forging along nicely, but I, I want us just, just to be mindful of the fact that God is working on the inside of all of us. All of us have had some issue that we've dealt with throughout the year. There were some things that last year that you went to God about and the new year came about and some things still seem the same. But I want to tell you, child of God, that God is very mindful about what you're going through and what your situation and your circumstance may be. 
that God never ceased from being who he is. And so we've been, the last few weeks here, we've been teaching in this area about our identity. And if you've been following along in this particular series, and if you notice that um, Pastor Carol, she would teach one week and then I would teach the following week and we kind of tag team. Um, but we're on uh, part number four regarding our identity. And something I've learned in this walk with God is that our identity is something that must be, gotta be taught. Can you say amen? And so we had used as a springboard for teaching on this, our identity in Christ, that we were looking at uh, the book of Romans and how uh, the writer in the eighth chapter, he gave us this platform, if you will, and we came up with eight benefits of our identity in Christ. And as I begin to review what we have been teaching already, it was uh, a particular uh, benefit that, that the Holy Spirit began to work on the inside of me. And I felt as though that God would have me to share it along with you. But here in Romans chapter 8, the audience is now listening to the writer. And this is what he said in verse 14 through 16. He says, for all those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children or sons of God. Verse 15, the Spirit, notice that it's capitalized, the Spirit you received does not make you slaves again to fear, or you did not receive the spirit of slavery leading to fear. Instead, you receive the spirit who adopts you as God's children of adoption. With or through that spirit, we cry out, Abba, Father. And, and that's the Aramaic for the word Father. And, and there's a reference that we talked about in our last meeting uh, in Mark chapter 14, verse 36. And so that out of those eight benefits of our identity in Christ, I'm not going to go over all of them, but I'm just going to look at it was the fifth one that we had talked about is that the spirit himself testifies, declares to our spirit the assurance that we are God's children, that we are tripodomite, that we are tribe beings, that we are made up of three parts. We're made up of spirit, soul and body and one of the things I've, I've really been trying to press here is that you don't have a spirit you are spirit we are a trichotomite being that we are spirit that has a soul that resides in a physical body again you don't have a spirit you are spirit because before you had a soul before you had a body you had a spirit that you are spirit being you know, in our, when we think of it this way, is that because we are already a spirit, then you look at the soul. The soul is where you have your mind, your will, and your emotion. Where you choose your thinker and your feeler. And an example of that is, okay, here we go. Um, you woke up this morning in your mind, you said, I don't feel like going to church today. Have I got a witness? I, I don't, my body don't feel like going to church today. That's, that's your mind speaking, but your will said, no, I need to get my behind up out of this bed and I need to go to church. I, I need to be taught the word of God. There's something that I'm going to learn today. I don't care what my mind was telling me. My mind is telling me to stay in the bed, but my, my will says I've got to go to the house of God. And guess what happens to the body? The body goes where the spirit and the soul goes. So we have that understanding. In our Christian theology, the tripartite view or trichotomy, it holds that humankind is a composite of three distinct components. Now they put it the order this way. They call it the body, the spirit, and the soul. And I beg to differ with the order. Because long before we had a soul, long before we had a body, we were spirit first. Spirit, soul, and body. And so what happens here is that God... He begins to speak to man. He begins to speak beyond uh, our, 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 our physical being. God speaks directly to our spirit man. Now, if you are one of these Christians who hear God talking to your audible ear, God bless you. you, you, you you're, you're, you're phenomenal. If, they, if you are hearing God with your physical ears, that's wonderful. But in most cases, God, he speaks to the spirit of the man. And I, I, I will say this. I, I will give you a little bit of transparency. 
uh, Pastor Carol and I, when we were living in Washington, D.C., we had bought our home there, and whew, this was a long time ago, and the, the weather had just changed, it had now become chilly, and we went to turn on the furnace, and Lord Jesus, we don't talk about this often, we went down to, to, to light the burner, and before I went to light the burner, I heard someone tell me, don't do it, check the furnace. Check the furnace. How I many you know that you check the furnace? And I, I put my hand, and I was a little mechanically inclined, but not that inclined, that I actually put my hand up inside of the furnace. The voice said, check. And when I put my hand up inside the, the bottles, or inside the, the, the furnace, there was a blockage. There was a blockage. And this is the same area that if I was to light the burner, now something is blocking it. And I end up pulling out a container. I pulled out a toolbox, a plastic toolbox that had propane gasoline or propane gas inside of it. How many of you know that you would never have met Pastor Dave, you would never have met Pastor Carol had I lit the burner? I'm here to tell you, child of God, that there are times when God will speak directly to your natural mind. He can speak to your spirit, and that's one thing I thank God for. But there's sometimes when He got to speak to you audibly because He loves you so much. The enemy tried to cancel the assignment that God had on my life to be able to bring you even word today that you would never have known me had I lit the burn. I'm, I'm a little leery at times when people are like, well, God told me this and God told me that. That's fine. But he's speaking to your natural mind. He's speaking to your spirit, man. But if you hear in your audible ear, glory to God, you need to relish that thing to know I heard from, I heard the voice of God on my life. But the enemy tried to cancel that assignment that God had on my life. And I'm sure there's some of you here today that you heard God in your audible ear. He says, you need to pack your bags. Pack your bags and head to Florida. Glory to God. I'm here to tell you that you need to be where God tells you to be. And you have to learn how to become obedient to the spirit of the living God. Glory to God. Holy Spirit is looking to connect with us. Holy Spirit is always in. I think you'll get this. And I know my teens will get it. Holy Spirit is always in search mode. Huh? How I many you know it? That, that to be able to connect heaven and earth, and as a believer, you and I, we must always be in this discovery mode. I, I know you're walking with me. Willing to hear from God that He calls us by name, identifying us as by His Son that we are in Him. Somebody say connected. connected. Of course, you know what I'm referring to is the Bluetooth technology. <laughs> huh? Connected. Right? That you have your device that's now wireless, that now you're connecting to another device wireless. Some of us, when we get into our car, the phone is already connected to the Bluetooth in the car. And I'm here to tell you as an example that that's what God is doing in our lives. That he wants us to always be in the discovery mode because Holy Spirit is always speaking to us in that way. I'm reminded that the writer said in Proverbs chapter 20, verse 7, he says, The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. The candlestick of God is like a flashlight that's held up against every thought and way to see if it lines up with the word of God. God says, he said, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. He says, my ways are higher than your ways. Yeah. That what he does is that he searches the bowels of our beings. He searches our thought life. He, he's searching for the real you. I'm going to tell my age here in, in a little bit. I, I remember this, this TV show called To Tell the Truth. Huh? How many remember To Tell the Truth? And that you had a panel of judges and they had a person that you had to figure out what their identity was. And they had a whole list of questions that were asked these people and, and, and at the very end, the judges, they would decide which one was the person they were talking about. And they said, will the real, in this particular case, will the real David Nelson please stand up? Who's going to stand up? Spirit, soul, or body? Will the real you please 
stand up. And what we want to be able to do is that having our life to line up with Christ's identity, that his DNA can be seen on the inside of us, that we are reflectors of his glory, that we should see some glimmer of God on the inside of you. I should be able to see something in your life that tells me, that shows me, Vince, that, that God is on the inside of you. That I see a reflection of who he is, that I can see a resemblance of his spirit. The scripture says that we're the light of the world. But the question is, who are we reflecting? What, what light are we reflecting? We should be the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. I like how John, he put it this way in chapter 6 and verse 12. He says in the Amplified Bible, he says, But to all who did accept, to all who did receive him and believe in him, in his name, the name indicating the character of the person. He gave the right or gave the power, gave the authority to become children of God. To as many as believed on him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. King James Version says that understand that we operate child of God in a dual realm system. That of the spirit realm and that of the natural realm. Our identity is in God by Christ Jesus. That we are in him as sons and daughters of the most high God operating on the earth with access by his spirit to heaven. Understand some child of God that you are a connector, that you are uh, uh, have the ability to be able to, to operate in two realms at the same time. We on the earth operate in the spirit realm. We on the earth also operate in the natural realm. We operate in two realms at the very same time. The scripture says that we're wonderfully and fearfully made. And because we're wonderfully and fearfully made, then we can operate in wholeness on the earth and that we can, we can represent heaven. Child of God, you don't have to wait to get to heaven to experience all that heaven has for you. That you can experience, as the scripture says, experience days of heaven on the earth. Glory to God. When you know your identity, when you know who you are, are access to heaven on the earth. You know, when we think about our identity, we think about how every child, and all of us have been one, if you're here today and you've not been a child, raise your hand. Okay, I, I thought I'm in the right room. Every child desires affirmation. Somebody say affirmation. Mm -hmm. That even us as adults, we also desire affirmation. As believers, we want this affirmation, want this recognition of Abba Father. We want the, the, the recognition from, from Daddy. I, I see a lot of Daddy's girls in the room. I, I know that you have this connection with your father and that you are a Daddy's girl. You're looking for the affirmation of your Daddy. I see sons in the room and Every son wants the affirmation of his father. Every child of God. It, it doesn't make a difference whether you are a believer or not. You want affirmation. You want to be known. You want to be told that you're loved. You want to be told that you're appreciated. You want to feel the hug of your daddy. You want to feel the hug of your mother. It's no different when we become adults. That we will want the, the affirmation of our God. And when we think about that. If we don't affirm our children, the world will do it for you. I'll say that again. If we don't affirm our children, the world will do it for you. Think about that. Receiving is our believing on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's given us this power to become a child of God. And I'll make this statement that belief is the affirmation and the receipt that we are God's family. I, I, it, it takes our believer, our ability to be able to receive from God, to as many as believed on him, to them gave he power to become. We have to become. Our belief is this affirmation. Power to become, the ability to become, it allows us to be connected. There's this Greek word, he know me. For my scholars here. It means to develop. It means to fill out. It's like blowing up a balloon. That the balloon becomes what it already is. 
the word become here indicates that you and I, that we have this part to play. Uh, uh, let me think, put it this way. Show me this way that when I was hired a long time ago, when I was hired as a federal law enforcement officer, I was hired to become. They hired me as a federal law enforcement officer. But you know, they, they, they didn't just give me a badge, they didn't just give me credentials, and they say, you know, we like that Danny guy, we, we really like him, man, just, here, here's your badge, you go out and you police, you go out and you do this law enforcement thing to the best of your ability, how you see fit. How many of you know that was an accident waiting to happen? No, 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 sir, we, no, 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 sir, no. I had to go to Glencoe, I had to go to the Federal Law Enforcement Training Academy, I had to learn about Constitution Law, I had to learn about uh, 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 firearms, I had to learn about um, physical tactics, I had to learn all these things, I had to learn um, so many things, but here's the thing, I, it had to be proven. Pastor Carroll talked last week about proving my walk in God. But although I was hired as a federal law enforcement officer, I had to become it. And whatever your profession is, whatever they hired you as, you had to become it. God has given us this power and this authority to become. And so when we become born again, that we have this right to become the sons and daughters of the most high God, we now have to walk it out. So we become born again, but then we don't come to church. Church is our training ground. This is where we learn how to become Christians. Can you say amen? Glory to God. Our identity in Christ is not automatic. There's a giving and receiving process. He has done the giving part. The receiving part is our open heart. Remember, he says, behold, I stand at the door and I knock. And he says, if you open the door and let me in, he says, I will come in and I will die and I will sup with you, that he will take up his abode on the inside of you. That's a part of the affirmation. Yeah. Heaven recognizes us in our identity by the blood. Somebody say the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood of Christ over our lives. What it does, it presents us before God clean and forgiven and Holy Spirit has marked us, has targeted us. Remember the children of Israel example. Remember in Exodus chapter 12, verse 12 through 13, and how God told Moses, he says, For that night I will pass through the land of Egypt and kill all the firstborn of the land of Egypt, both men and animals, and I will execute judgment against the gods of Egypt. I am Adonai. Verse 13, he says, The blood will serve you as a sign. Somebody say sign. A sign marking the houses where you are. When I see the blood, glory to God, I will pass over you. And when I strike the land of Egypt, the death blow will not strike you. And I like that in the complete Jewish version uh, of the Bible because God has already marked every last one of us. So that we can appear before him whole, clean. That Christ, he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. Glory to God. Can you say amen? In this example, Christ, uh, or, or he had, he, he has marked us with the blood. It says, unless there's a shedding of blood, there can be no remission. There can be no forgiveness of sin. But because we belong to him, because we have found our identity in him, we know to whom we are. We know to whom we belong. Isn't that good? Child of God, as believers, we have power, but it must, again, be proven. We are holy, but there is an appropriate response on our part. Again, Pastor Kel, she taught on last week about proving our walk with God. But you know, Pastor Carol, it's, it's easier for me to prove this walk with God when I know my identity in God. Yeah. When I know who I am, this walk is a whole lot easier. Yeah. Can you say amen? Yeah. It has something to do yeah. about perspective that I need to see as God sees. Let's try this. Uh, Dewan, can, can you come up here a second? Uh, may, may I see your glasses, please? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Let, let's see. Let's, let, let, let's see what this looks like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Uh, I can't see how she sees. Not through these. That's right. 
But there is a designated prescript huh, that God has already designed for my life and yours. That in order for me to understand the walk and the, the call of God that's on my life, I have to have the right prescript. Come on. And only that can only happen when I understand my authority, when I understand the, my identity and who he's called me to be. Listen. I, I want to be able to see as God sees. I, I want to be able to think as he thinks. I know his ways are higher than my ways, but you know what? This prescript that he has for my life, it allows me to have or, or begin to see things not from an earth to heaven perspective, but it causes me to change my thinking. I begin to think from heaven to earth perspective. I got to stop looking at things that, that's going on around me and thinking that, that this ought to be this way, this ought to be that way, but I need to stop looking at it from earth perspective, but begin to look at it from heaven perspective. What has God got to say? You, you can pick up the newspaper, you can pick up your tablet, you can pick up your phone, and the world has their version about how they think things should be. No, the question is, how does God see it? If I'm going to be called a child of the Most High God, if I'm going to take on His identity, I want to see like He sees. Glory to God. There's a certain prescript when you have and know your identity in God. There's this identity that we have in Christ. How do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as broke, busted, and disgusted? Do you see yourself as not being good enough? Do you see yourself as being a scrub? Who gave you the right to think that way? Who have you been talking to? Who have you been listening to? Don't you know who you are? Do not allow the world to dictate to you who you are. The only thing that should matter to you is what God says about you. I don't care what Facebook says. I don't care what TikTok says. I don't care what, what uh, Instagram says. I don't care. Matter of fact, I don't care what you say. The only thing that matters is what God says about me. And if you don't know what God says about you, you need to take your tail and get in the book. Jesus asked a question over 2,000 years ago that's still prevalent today. He says, who do men say that I am? And you know the enemy will cuss you out and call you every name in the book except the child of God. I was on the job and got in tune with the subordinate. An employee cussed Pastor Dave out from one end of the building to the other. Now whether he knew I was a pastor or not, I don't even care about that part. But the problem is nobody has ever listened to me. Ever said anything to me like that in my life. Throughout the investigation, one of my fellow supervisors in their testimony, she says, Dave was quiet. Dave was smiling. And, and I'm listening to this for the first time. I'm saying to myself, was I smiling? Because in the back of my mind is, please do it. Please swing. Please swing. You know, and I think it was because of the confidence that I had that I knew I could take it. You see, I, I knew that, you know, the, 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 the back side of my mind, old Dave was in waiting. Old Dave was waiting to jump in like, 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 like skipping the rope. Let's go. But she said I had a smile on my face. And of course, at the end of the day, I began to think, I said, Lord, did I represent the kingdom? I may have been smiling, everyone else saw the smile, but I knew what was in my heart. I was going to beat him like a stole something. You understand? But what, what I'm seeing here, though, is that who did I represent? In their eyes, man, that, I learned something. That guy's all right. They said I was smiling. But when I, thought, when I looked back over the matter, I had to search my heart. I had to take the flashlight of the Lord. I had to go through the lamp of God to see if there's any wicked thing on the inside of me. To see if my life lined up with the word of God. Can you say amen? amen. Glory to God. Do not allow the accuser of the brethren to define you or to rob you of your identity. That's all Satan wants to do. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy Jesus says, but I have come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly to the full till it overflows. 
the spirit himself again number five was talking about <clears throat> out of the eight benefits the spirit himself he testifies the spirit himself declares to our spirit the assurance that we are God's children yeah. last scripture Nikon, thank you for reading the scripture earlier today we love you thank you so much in Revelation chapter 2 Jesus who gave the revelation of himself to his servant John chapter 2 verse 17 Jesus says he that hath an ear yeah. that's good let him hear what the spirit notice is capitalized what the spirit saith unto the churches yeah. to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna and will give him a white stone and in the stone a new name written which no man knoweth saving he that receiveth and that's in the King James Version a revelation of a new name that no one else has given to me but God. My parents may have named me at birth. But my eternal God has given me a unique name. You know when you go to pair your Bluetooth device, you have to put in a code. <laughs> He's given you something specific just for you. Just as unique as my retina, just as unique as my fingerprint, he's going to give me a name that nobody else has a right to. Yes, sir. Why? Because I have my identity in him. Glory to God. I'm so excited about what God is doing in the life of the believer. We've been talking again about our identity in Christ. <clears throat> what Jesus did when he was talking to John, he spoke to him in a term that the hearer would understand. Because in Rome, when they would be in the races or athletic competition and events, the winner was given a white stone. And the white stone had their name on it. And it was their ticket to the celebration. God has a name specifically for you. So that you can attend the ceremony that he has already set aside for you. That he will bless you for your walk, for your running your race. Nobody can run your race but you. Yes, sir. Not your husband, not your wife, not your children. Nobody can run this race but you when you know who you are in Christ. Again, open our ears that we may hear. Open our eyes that we may see. Give us a heart to understand what Holy Spirit is saying to us today. That God is going to honor us with this new identity. Yes. Come on and stand to your feet this morning. Lord. Say our, our confession of faith. Yes. We say this aloud with me. I am a child of God. It is in Him that I live. I move and have my being. My identity and all of who I am is in Christ Jesus. I have been baptized and adopted into the family of God by the Spirit of God. I cry, Abba Father. Glory to God. Every head bowed, every eye closed. any wicked thing on the inside of us. Shed light on it. That we can make a conscious decision to turn from our wicked ways. That we will hear from heaven. Restore to us the joy of our salvation, our health, our wealth, our soundness, and our peace. Our soul, great soteria that you came to give us. There are those that are watching today. There may be some that are present here today who have never given their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. There may be some that want to rededicate their life to God. There may be some who need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. There may be some present who need a place to call home. If you're here today, and if one of those four things apply to you, we just raise your hand. If you 
are watching online, God sees you. We say, we say this simple prayer, brothers. Dear Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner and I need to be saved. I need to rededicate my life back to you. Precious Holy Spirit, come on the inside of me. Make your presence known in my life. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus. I believe God that you sent Jesus to die for my sins, past, present, and future. I believe that you raised Jesus from the dead on the third day and that he is seated at your right hand. I want to live this life that you died for, that you rose for. Thank you for saving me. Thank you. In Jesus' name, in all the church, said amen. Amen, amen, amen. Father, it's in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray for the people of God today. Those that are here, those that are traveling, even during this Labor Day weekend, that your grace and that your mercy will be upon them, that they get to their destination safely and that they get back home safely. And that, Lord, that you would, would shed upon them your goodness, that they'll be able to say, it is the Lord's doing and that it is marvelous in our lives. I speak and pronounce the blessing over the people of God and declare that, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Father, I declare that all things are well. And all the church say amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. And remember that the harvest is truly right. Amen. Praise God. Hello, this is Pastor Dave from Harvest Christian Ministries International. We are so excited that you decided to join us on our YouTube channel. We ask that you would give us a thumbs up, that you would share, that you would like, and that you would also subscribe. And remember, please hit that notification bell. That way you're notified every single time that we upload our videos. We ask if this ministry is being a blessing to you, that you will partner with us financially so that we can continue to promote the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We look forward to seeing you soon. And remember that the harvest is truly ripe.